it's really changed. Because I'm the chief of police here. Or members of the Eli Whitney Trades. I've been at an honest mob in my back. For YTV. For YTV. For YTV. For YTV. This is your Yale Week. Good evening, I'm Nicole Daly and welcome to your Yale Week. This week we're going to give you an account of the major events that have happened these past two weeks at Yale. A story of confrontation, racial justice, and unity. The two incidents that set off the conversations of the past weeks both occurred over Halloween weekend. Just after midnight on Friday, October 30th, Silliman Associate Master Erica Kostakis sent an email to all Silliman students pushing back against the content of an email in which the Intercultural Affairs Council asked students to be thoughtful about the cultural implications of their Halloween costumes. Later on Saturday, a Yale College student posted on Facebook about women of color being turned away from a party at the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity the previous night on the basis that the party was for white girls only. Students expressed that these two events were not isolated incidents, but rather indications of institutional racism present at Yale, revealing deeply held sentiments among students of color that Yale is not meant for them. As a result of the email, students began signing an open letter to the Christakis, listing their failures as master and associate master to provide a safe space for students. And as a result of the Facebook post, the university launched an investigation into the claim the same day. In addition, students upset by these incidents began to organize ways to discuss the events in forums across campus. Of these forums, the largest was held at the African American Cultural Center the following Wednesday. In this forum, hundreds of students talked to the administration and their fellow students about these incidents and other incidences of racism at Yale. The Christakis, as well as brothers from SAE, were present, but the Christakis left early citing other responsibilities. Yale College Dean Jonathan Holloway and Yale University President Peter Salovey were not present at this forum. The next day, a chalking event was hosted at 12.30 p.m. on Cross Campus to present positive messages to students, particularly women of color. Holloway attended the event and students gathered around him and began to air their grievances about the administration's lack of response to the two incidents of the previous weekend as well as racism at Yale in general. After Holloway listened to dozens of student concerns for over three hours, he made a speech to the now hundreds of gathered students promising to do better. Immediately afterwards, many of the students marched to Silliman College where they chalked the courtyard in much the same way as cross campus. Krasaka saw the students and approached them, which soon transformed into a heated argument between the master and students. A debate about whether Christakis was defending free speech or bullying an already oppressed minority ensued, and many students left this encounter frustrated and upset. That evening at 6 p.m., about 50 students, primarily of color, gathered in the corporation room in Woodbridge Hall, spending roughly four hours talking with Salovey, Holloway, University Secretary and Vice President for Student Life, Kimberly Goff Cruz, and Salovey's Chief of Staff, Joy McGrath. The next day, Holloway and Salovey issued separate emails to the student body citing both encounters with students of the previous days and apologizing for their slow response to the incidents of last week. Master and Associate Master Krasakis sent out a letter to Silliman College that day apologizing for causing students pain. Next, various organizations including the Asian American Cultural Center and the Yale Herald created letters of support for the movement. Down Magazine, a weekly magazine designed to amplify the voices of students of color at Yale, issued a list of demands for the university to implement, including, quote, mandatory diversity sensitivity trainings for all faculty, staff, and students, and mental health programs for the black community and other communities of color that are specifically funded and specific to people of color experiences. By this point, national news coverage descended on Yale as many editorials pitted the protest as PC culture versus free speech. Over the weekend, students organized and came together on Monday, November 9th in the March of Resilience. Over 1,200 students, as well as Salovey and other faculty members, were in attendance. Students came together in unity and love, which some say changed campus dialogue to one of support and progress. On Tuesday, racist messages were paraded across Yale's campus by two men from a non-Yale group called Million Dollar Extreme, an internet show that focuses on shock value. Salovey and Yale Chief of Police Ronnell Higgins immediately issued statements against this incident. Wednesday evening, over 800 students came together in Patel Chapel for a teach-in. Four panels consisting of faculty members and student leaders discussed valuing women of color at Yale, mental health and its impact on communities of color, addressing white and male privilege, and the importance of taking ethnic studies. In addition, Thursday at 12.30 p.m., students gathered in front of Sterling Memorial Library to stand in solidarity with students of color at Mizzou and around the country. 
dressed in all black, they took a group picture to show their love and support for, quote, students who are embarking on the same journey towards liberation. Late Thursday night, roughly 200 students marched to Salave's home on Hill House Avenue with a new set of demands and a new name, Next Yale. The students said the new movement will hold Yale accountable to its students of color and said the new demands, which supersede those written by the Black Student Alliance at Yale, was crafted by a diverse coalition of students. The six demands can be found on Down Magazine's website. The ball will play its season opener in New Britain against Fairfield on Friday at 3 p.m hoping to start off the season with a win. And men's soccer will be playing its final game of the season.